Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my review for The Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 8, the mid-season finale, and what a mid-season finale it was. I definitely thought this was a great episode. I'll just kind of say that right now. Um, I don't really know if I like the ending or not, though, but I'll get into that um, later on. But um, how I'm going to structure this is I'm going to review the episode itself, and then... Um, when I finish reviewing it, I'll kind of give my thoughts on how I think the season has been so far. Um, so let's get right into this. This episode is called How It's Gonna Be. And this episode came out on December 10th, 2017. And yeah, pretty much um, the episode kicked off. Um, so this, this, siege, this episode had... Four storylines that took place, so it's going to be kind of the same format where I talk about um, each storyline all at once and kind of talk about the lead-up. This one will be structured very weirdly, though, just because um, all of the storylines, some of them you have to kind of jump and talk about them later because uh, um, that just because um, it kind of leads to the next event. So let's talk about uh, this storyline. Um... But, uh, yeah, so let's talk about this episode. So it shows Rick and the scavengers back um, at the sanctuary. And when Rick sees that there's no walkers there, um, he's very curious about how the walkers were able to escape. So he's look, um, he looks through his thing and looks for him. He calls in to the radio and uh, well, to the walkie-talkie that one of the snipers had. And nobody responds. And then... Um, a sniper tries to shoot at Rick and the scavengers, and then Rick and the scavengers duck, and the scavengers abandon Rick, um, probably because they saw that, uh, Rick didn't fulfill with his promise and saw that the, um, saviors really weren't as in much trouble as they thought they were. So, um, Jerry and Carol come up, um, and end up saving Rick, and then what happens later on is... They get hit by a cop, um, by some sort of car, and this causes them to tip over, but we don't really see anything that kind of happened with that, because then we just see Carol by herself, and we see, I think, J um, Jerry, um, gets taken hostage, um, yeah, um, Jerry gets taken hostage by people, and then we don't really see, and then Rick kind of does his own thing. So that was kind of weird that we didn't really see that they were hit by a car, but we didn't really see like what happened with them. We only really saw what happened with Jerry, but Rick and Carol just got off fine. We didn't really see it. That was really strange. Um, so that will get that part of the episode. We'll kind of get a thumbs in the middle. They also showed um, a flashback from earlier. Uh, this was uh, back um, after the events that took place in the season premiere um, when Sunil. Um, when Rick shot at Sunil, giving him the warning shots, and Carl and Rick really weren't happy. You know, and Carl wasn't really happy with Rick um, that he ended up shooting at Sunil. So Carl kind of uh, goes off on him, and uh, Rick pretty much, you know, had thought he was a spy. And Rick says that he hopes he does make it if he isn't a spy. And Carl tells him that you can hope all you want, but if you don't do something about it, um, then your hope means nothing. And then he kind of starts to question Rick about what he's really in this war for. Are you really in it to make a better place? Or are you just going to, are you in it more for vengeance just to kill other people? Um, and then he kind of says, because um, the, then, because um, if that's the case, then this is how things are going to be, which kind of ties into the title of the episode. So I did like that scene. Um, and then everything else kind of separated into separate storylines. So I'm going to kind of talk about all the storylines separately. Um, I'm going to start off by talking about what went on with Aaron and Eden because that, that, uh, that really wasn't all that important in this episode. Um, it's probably going to be important later on in the series, um, in the season, but not in this episode. What happens is Aaron and Eden are going to go to the, the ocean side and try to convince them to join up in the fight against the saviors. Because uh, Aaron says that um, his partner Eric had to die because of this and he wants his death to mean something. Um, and Eden thinks that they should win some guns and supplies to kind of make them, um, want to join up with them. 
And at first, Erwin's kind of like, no, because we need these gun supplies to fight the saviors. But then, um, Eden finds a store that carries supplies. And, um, then, um, when they go to bring the supplies to them, um, Erwin and Eden he overhear somebody about to, uh, take the supplies from them. And Erwin goes out to attack them, but then Erwin gets... Um, attack, so then Eden shoots someone, and we find out that it was Natanya, and Cindy obviously mourns the loss of Natanya. Now, this wasn't necessarily bad, but I'm going to give, I'm going to give this a down, because this really wasn't necessary to put in this episode. I think you could have probably, uh, you know, done a different episode where you kind of just had this storyline in there, and you kind of had it take place the whole episode, just because, or like halfway through, just because I thought there was more important stuff to really take place in this episode, um, you know, uh, the, than we thought. All right, now let's kind of talk about, really the rest of the episode was this war that went on between the militia and the saviors. And pretty much the saviors, um, to kind of spoil it a little bit, uh, they struck back and they struck back hard. They got the upper hand. But let's talk about everything first that went on with uh, uh, the kingdom side of things. Uh, so what happens is Gavin, who kind of runs the kingdom side of things, comes over to the, um, the kingdom, and the ki um, you know Ken Ezekiel overhears it. He sees a note that was wi um, written by Jerry, tell him that they're going to go finish this war and they're going to win, and he's going to do it all for Ken Ezekiel. And then people invade his theater, and Ken Ezekiel hides. And Gavin tells everybody that because the sanctuary um, was invaded by walkers and is all destroyed, that, um, actually, no, I forgot one thing. There was one minor storyline that kind of took place, but that's pretty important. So throughout this episode, too, Eugene was kind of starting to question himself about whether or not he, w he wanted to do the right thing or not, because everybody, we find out that Eugene was the one that unveiled the plan to make the wrong bullets and shoot the walkers and helped the saviors escape. So then eventually what happens is Eugene um, then decides to do the right thing and break um, Dr. Carlson out of the sanctuary to go, so that way he could go tend to Glenn and Maggie's child. Um, and he reveals, um, and they kind of do it in a funny way where he pretends he did it by accident, that he gave um, the, the, gu the sniper guard, uh, laxatives and really won't be, um, and use it as a distraction. He pretended to drop his keys and he said he did it because he thinks it's the right thing to do. To do. And Gabriel wants him to go with him. Like Eugene doesn't think they're going to, um, that, um, the militia is going to accept him back as a group because, um, of all the things, um, you know, um, of all the things that he's done. Um, you um, um, after uh, he joined the Saviors. So I actually like this part here. I give this an up. Um, it kind of show that he, um, Eugene still is a good person on the inside, but he's still kind of struggling with himself. So I like this. Now I'm assuming what's going to happen is when Negan finds out about this, he's going to be pissed, and I don't think he's going to think Eugene did it. He's probably going to think somebody else in the group did it. Um. All right, now let's get back to everything that took place at the kingdom. So I mentioned the stuff with Gavin. So Gavin pretty much says that because the sanctuary uh, was destroyed, that the kingdom's going to be the new place for the saviors now. And everyone's going to be uh, workers, and um, they're going to have to provide for the saviors. Um, but he only needs one thing, and that's Ken Ezekiel. And he wants Ken Ezekiel dead um, and hung out. Um, as a walker, so everybody can look at him. So he wants somebody to give up where he is. Nobody does. So this means this is going to cause a lot of deaths. But then what happens is you, uh, Ken Ezekiel um, causes a ton of explosives to go off, and this distracts the saviors long enough for the members of the kingdom to escape. And Carol tries to come in and save him, but Ken Ezekiel locks her out and um, wants her to get to safety and sacrifices himself for the kingdom, which I actually liked. That made him look like a good leader. 
So Gavin comes up and the rest of the members of the Saviors. And you can kind of see that Gavin really doesn't want to do this. He kind of feels like he has to do this because you can kind of see he's conflicted about it. Um, so he pretty much says that now Ken Ezekiel is going to die. And we know Ken Ezekiel is going to die. But then throughout the shadows, we see Morgan come up. And we didn't really see what happened with this. But I'm assuming what's going to happen on the mid-season premiere is that uh, Morgan's probably going to kill... Gavin and the rest of the two members of the Saviors and save Ken Ezekiel. Um, we just need to see it play out here. But I like this. I thought this was a good part of the episode, getting it up. And then we have everything that kind of took place at the hilltop side of things. Um, the hilltop were going to the kingdom to finish this war with the Saviors. But then they get stopped um, by a... Tr uh, well, this uh, Maggie sees that there's been a... A uh, truck tipped over, that, no, a tree tipped over, and they assumed that the Saviors did it. Um, because obviously she was a part of this before, uh, at the end, at the season finale of season six. And um, she tells everybody to turn around, but the rest of the members of the Saviors are behind them. And then Simon pops out and um, takes out Jerry and threatens to kill him, um, pretty much. Yeah, um, and he forces the Hilltop to give up their guns. And Simon gives her two options. Either um, they don't go, um, either he kills Jerry, um, they take Maggie back and put her in the uh, casket. They had a casket with them. Um, and, they, um, and she'll kill him right in front of the hilltop, um, right in front of everybody. And she becomes a walker outside the fence with the sanctuary um and they do the exact and then they bring the walkers um and do the same thing that they did to them in this season where um everybody has to fight them off or um they can keep their hilltop and just continue providing um for um the saviors so obviously um simon though says that they still have to kill somebody so then they kill he ends up killing Neil, and uh, Maggie then uh, decides to go back, and she also wants um, the casket to bury Neil's dead body, and obviously um, Gavin grants her that favor. And then um, when they go back, Maggie pulls out one of the members of the Saviors and, uh, out of the jail cell and murders him, and... Um, Reveals that they're not going to give up this war yet. Uh, they're going to continue fighting. Um, I did like this scene a lot. I thought this was definitely getting it up. Um, and I liked it. I thought it was really good. Um, so there you go. Um, I liked it. Um, and then obviously later on. Um, in the casket. Um, she ends up uh, writing a message. Talking about how they're going to have. Um you know, um, like, more, um, that they're not going to give up yet, and, um, I liked, yeah, I like that, um, I like, so I liked this scene a lot, and then, obviously, back at Alexandria, um, everybody there was getting ready for war, they tried doing this funny scene with, like, Rosita and Taylor, and, where Rosita made Taylor hold out all the supplies, and I get it was supposed to be symbolic for something, but it just wasn't funny. Like I said, they always try to do these funny scenes with Taylor, and they're never funny. Taylor's not funny. Stop trying to do it, because it's just not funny. And um, everybody's gearing up for war. Um, Carl, we see, wrote a message to his father. And we see that he wrote the message, just survived somehow. And um, then Carl's uh, by the sewer. And Michonne's suspicious about what he's doing because um, they were about to go out and fight off the Saviors. And Daryl and uh, Taylor also revealed that their uh, plan where they uh, ran the truck into um, the uh, sanctuary worked. And But uh, Michonne didn't want to uh, have to do things that way, but admitted they were right. And Carl then reveals that he was helping someone that was living down in the sewer. But then we hear... Uh, the rest of the members of the Saviors, Negan's, uh, led by Negan this time, and they give him f four minutes to open the doors, um, or else they're gonna blow up the place. And nobody opens the doors, so, 
Uh, Negan's about to blow up the place. And then what happens is Carl goes up on the um, wall and doesn't want Negan to kill anybody. Um, you know, he tells him that there's family and children, there's families and children in here, and my little sister's in here, and he doesn't want um, Negan to kill him. Negan to kill those families. But Negan then is like, well, you guys didn't really seem to mind when you guys had to do it the other way around. Um, so then um, Negan said all your dad had to do was just, um, you know, um, all he had to do was fall in line and take orders from me, but that's not what happened. And a lot of people now are going to die from it. So then Carl wants Negan to kill him. Um... Carl says that just kill. Carl says just to kill him and end this war. Um, and then Negan, you know, is considering it. Um, but then we reveal that this confrontation was a distraction. So that because um, then what happens is um, Dwight um, and the rest of the members of the Saviors set up um, a barricade so that way nobody could get out. But then everybody uh, breaks out anyways, and this was used as a distraction. Um, and so a ton of explosives go off, and Negan orders the rest of the members of the Saviors to attack the town and find Carl, tie him up, but don't kill him. And he's going to go wait for Rick and make some spaghetti. I thought that was a great line. So then, um, Bashan, Taylor, Dale, and Rosita all go out and, uh, with guns and wait for the signal. And they throw an explosive down. And Dwight um, uh, drives him right into it. And one of the members of the Saviors, the other lieutenant, um, uh, Laura, her name is. And, um, yeah, Laura, uh, Laura, uh, Laura tries to tell Dwight to stop because obviously they're going to get everybody killed. But obviously Dwight doesn't stop. So this leads the attack, and then Laura realizes that Dwight has been backstabbing them. Um, so then Dwight and her get into a shootout. She shoots Dwight's shoulder, and then Dwight shoots everybody right in front of her. Um, and she manages to escape. So then Dwight realizes that um, he can't really be the man on the inside now because she's going to reveal that um, to Negan that he's the one that's been uh, the man on the inside. And Daryl considers killing him, uh, but Dwight says that he can still help him because he knows how Negan thinks he can still kind of be one step ahead of him. And um, nobody kills Dwight. Um, and then what happens is Wick comes back to Alexandria and he's looking for Carl and Judith. And Negan attacks Wick, beats the crap out of him, goes to hit him with Lucille, and he ducks, and Rick fights back, but pretty much he gets his ass kicked by Negan, and he, he's able to hit him off the head with, like, some sort of, um, ashtray or something. I don't really know what it was, because I couldn't really see it. But then Negan kicks him out the window, and he's about to take the seal and hit him, but then Rick's able to escape. Uh, so I did kind of like that they finally had a little bit of a confrontation with each other. Um, I, I obviously, we obviously know Rick's gonna probably eventually kill Negan at some point, uh, but obviously now wasn't the time, but I did like they had a little bit of a confrontation. And also what happens prior to this is Mashon um, is trying to find Carl and can't find him. And everybody went to go underneath the sewer um, after the Alexandria had been absolutely destroyed and absolutely um, and explosions and buildings being destroyed. Um, but then uh, Mashon is trying to find Carl and one of the members of the Saviors attacks Mashon from behind. And Mashon's able to fight him off and stab him, stab him with her, her sword. And Rick and Mashon are trying to find Carl and everybody else. And then we find out that they're underneath the sewer. And when they go underneath the sewer, they see everybody from Alexandria is under there. And then he finds Carl. And then Carl reveals that um, he's been bit. We find out that in episode 6, when the walkers tackled him down, he was bit by a, one of the walkers. So that means we know that Carl is being killed off. Um, because when you're bit, you're pretty much are going to die. Either he's going to get, Rick's going to have to kill him, or, um, Carl, Carl will just turn into a walker and die. 
So that kind of explains probably why Carl was featured as much as he was in this episode and stuff. And maybe explains why Carl really didn't care if he lived or died. Because he knew he was dying anyways. So it is what it is. Um, so this is what I don't know if I'm a fan of. So I liked everything that happened with Alexandria. But I don't think Carl should be killed off. He's kind of like one of those characters, those key characters that should stick around. Now, I tried to see, too, if there was anything, like, in his personal life. Um, or, you know, any, if he had any other projects that he had coming up, so they had to kill him off. But it doesn't seem that way. So I just don't really think it makes any sense. The, uh, the reason they gave is because they wanted to give Rick more of an incentive to kill Negan. But it's not like Negan killed Carl or anything. And it's not like he got... He, he, it's not like... He got the bite, um, anything that associated with the Saviors. It would have made more sense if Sadiq had been aligned with the Saviors and we found out he was a spy and it caused Carl to die because of that. But we haven't even found that out yet. And I just don't really think Carl should be killed off. Like I said, there were those, there, there those certain key characters that shouldn't be killed off um, and Carl was one of them. He was kind of like what makes the show uh, really entertaining because... His character um, changes so much. He's the perfect kind of character to be in this world. And now that's kind of an element they don't have in the show now because um, he's going to be killed off. Now, in the comic books, this does not happen. Um, I did read that Rick is the one that I think that gets killed off and Carl takes ownership of the group. And I would have rather have that happen just because I know Rick's been a key factor in the group. But I think that would have been a nice new direction to take because I think Walking Dead kind of needs a new direction. Because if Carl was the leader of the group, it would kind of, um, you know, put him um, in higher water. But that was this episode. I thought it was a great episode. Not really a huge fan of the end. I don't really think Carl should be killed off. Uh, but it is what it is. It's going to happen. It's the episode. It's how it's going to be. Um, so as long as Walking Dead's making the money, and as long as people still go to conventions, as long as... Um, they're probably the top five highest rated show on AMC. As long as they, you know, pretty much as long as Walking Dead makes money um, and gets their t-shirt sales and gets their Walker Stalker conventions. And it has their die. Like I've talked about, and I haven't talked about this before, Walking Dead can really do anything. The only thing they can't really probably touch is kill off Wick and Daryl. But they can pretty much do anything else because it has their loyal fans. Pretty much everybody that's watched The Walking Dead now is people who've watched it since the beginning or people that have just read the comic books. Nobody um, new is starting off on season 8. So they can pretty much do whatever they want. They have their hardcore fans. Um, whatever, right? So um, I'm kind of pissed about it because Walking Dead used to be great. Um, and I still think it's good. A lot of people say it sucks. I don't think it sucks, but I still think it's good. But it's kind of like, it just kind of feels like it's definitely dipped in quality. Um, it definitely doesn't feel like it's as good as it used to be. Um, I don't know what the reason of that is because a lot of this stuff kind of happens in the comic books. And it doesn't, it seems to be great in the comics, but it doesn't seem to really translate to TV. Um, and I, yeah, I don't know what, I don't really know what's going to happen now. Um. So I w but I wouldn't be surprised if Chandler, Ricks, Chandler Riggs, who plays Call, ended up being in some sort of other TV show. Um, so, yeah. It's so strange, though, because uh, he was eight years old uh, when this show started, back in 2010. And now it's eight years later, and he's 18. So it's kind of nice to kind of see the progression, um, yeah, of uh, Chandler Riggs, so... That's definitely uh, funny. But yeah, that's my thoughts. If I had to rate this episode, I thought it was great. So I'll give it a uh, 8 out of 10, um, which is a B. Actually, uh, I'll give it a 8.5, B+. Plus. It was a great episode. The only thing I didn't care for was Carl being killed off, the stuff that happened, and the stuff that happened with Oceanside. It, it really wasn't needed. So, yeah. But anyhow, that's uh, my thoughts on this review of um, Walking Dead. Let me kind of... Now let me kind of talk about this season so far. Overall, this season I thought has been pretty good. Um, it definitely kind of shows how much the quality has fallen down with The Walking Dead. Because, uh, yeah, this season um, I think 
kind of st- got off to kind of a slow start. Uh, but but I would say if I had to kind of decide between this season and, and the last season, I would definitely say this season so far has been better than the last season. Obviously, um, if I'm just going by, you know, the mid-season stuff, um, I thought this season kind of kicked off to more of a bane. Well, at least the first few episodes, I kind of feel like they have one big storyline to kind of focus in on, and I do like that. And overall, I've enjoyed uh, this season so far. I would say if I had to give it a rating, I would give it... I'd say it's been a decent... Um, a pretty good season. I would say a good season. Actually, I'd probably say a decent season. I'd probably give it like a 6.5 out of 10. Um, I think what's hurt the season is uh, too many characters, and it doesn't really feel like that they have a lot of uh, character development and stuff, so it is what it is. But overall, I enjoy. But I overall this season, I think it's been pretty decent so far, and I can't wait to watch the next. Um, well, it, well, the next season, yeah, but the rest of the season. So I can't wait to uh, see that. But that's pretty much my thoughts on The Walking Dead, mid um, for the mid season so far. Um, but yeah, we have to wait to. Um, I, I we have to wait to see what's going to happen now that Carl has been killed off. So we will have to wait and see. But overall, I really don't have anything left to say. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video uh, so people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content and click on the bell. Uh, so that way, every time you upload a video, you guys will get the notifications for it. Make sure you guys do the same thing for my CM Brothers channel. That's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.